Okay, when I saw this, this blew my mind. Pretty Boy James, th th this is crazy. Think you're so cool, huh, Mr. Cool? Mr. Modern Day James? Modern Day James thinking he's so cool. Walking in here, you insult me? You insult my dog? You insult my jacket? Oh, God. Oh, no. Look, look what you made me do. This one's on you, James. You did this. Oh, God, I hate you already. Wonder if I can just... Yeah, that might do. All right, let's take a look at this guy's work. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be breaking down, I'm gonna be fixing some of James's trash, garbage drawings. I can't look at him anymore. This guy's always in my face. We're gonna be going over two things, okay? We're gonna try to understand are good shapes more important than reality? Meaning bone structure, anatomy, anatomical, you know, this and that. At the end of this, I'm gonna have a draw this in your style challenge that I wanna see you guys try to do. Just go to the end of the video if you wanna uh, check that out. All right, just taking a look at this drawing right here, I believe as a student uh, growing up, this never helped me at all. It only confused me, it only made my drawings more stiffer. Okay, maybe knowing what's underneath the bones, the structure can help you, but knowing their names, knowing exactly what they're called, where every single specific thing is, is happening, I, throw it out the window. That's what I say. Understanding good shapes is more important than understanding reality. Entertainment matters more than the truth. If you don't understand how to simplify a pose, make it dynamic, and you're only focusing on what is anatomically correct, you're going to end up with something like this. And I know this because I did this for a very long time. I would turn in my storyboards to my directors and they wouldn't care if something was anatomically correct. They just wanted the pose to look cool. And I'm so proud of getting all the perfect muscles right in the exact right spots and this and that. But it doesn't matter. You can make the pose dynamic, you can make it really cool, and then try to clean up the anatomical part of it. All of this guy's body parts are perfect. But is the pose good? No. All right, let's take a look at what this, this Joker can do. All right, first of all, what the heck is that? That's a building? Is that supposed to be a building? Okay, I see wheels, but it, that's not a car. I don't understand what... And then I begin blocking in the shadow shapes. Shadow shapes. Do you even hear yourself when you talk? It's not even making any sense. First of all, where's all the color? It's lazy. That's what it is. You're being lazy. It looks like a banana. Are you drawing fruit? Is this fruit now? And are these supposed to be faces? I... Where... Where are the bodies? Now where's your structure? Okay, now where's the bones and all this stuff? I Make up your mind, are you gonna draw bones? Are you gonna draw a body? See, this guy's already... <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, all right? Let's go, come on. <laughs> let's go. Right here, you see there's a rib cage. Okay, uh, he's trying to break it down. Yes, you got the rib cage. Obviously, we can see that the muscle does this and then the hips come out this way. For learning, if, if you're trying to learn this way, yeah, that's cool. Don't think, don't you think for a second. I don't want people to think that this is an end. This is a means to an end. Meaning, all right, this is just for me. This is just what I'm thinking, okay? This is what I'm thinking in my little brain that this is a tool to understand the anatomy. If you're trying to create good dynamic poses for animation or whatever, for illustration, you're going to have a stretch and a pinch. So I want you to stand up, get out of your little chair, or your high chair, whatever you're sitting in, and do this number. That's all you gotta do, honestly. You just feel it out. You just feel the curve. Focusing so closely on uh, realism really kept me from looking at the bigger picture and to see what actually matters in a pose. Doing this type of stuff that he has right here, that would only confuse me and think, oh, I've got to focus on the pose and I've got to think about the bone structure and I've got to think about how the muscles fit on top of that. You need to take things step by step. For me, focusing on the form that is visible on top of the body is the most important. After that, you can go and break down and do whatever you want. Okay, so doing these type of breakdowns that he's doing, it can be really helpful. But if you want to blast that and learn a lot faster, this is what I did. Here's a little secret. I'm gonna just gonna spit a little secret on you. And I talk about this all the time. Here's what you do. On the side, look at really really good artists that can break down the anatomy in super simple ways so on the one side you're studying realism 
and then on the other side within the same study. You're understanding where professionals put their focus. They're not looking at the freaking toe bleakless of the Dextoid or whatever. They're looking at what matters, what really matters. They're looking at where the hip turns. They're looking at yada yada. So, all right, let's check it out. So this is uh, Eugene Lee. This guy was my director on Voltron. And I, I, was, I was drawing so much detail on my characters until I started looking at how he's doing his. Look at how simple this whole shape is. I gotta tell you, after I saw this shape, again, there's the pinch and then there's a the stretch. After I saw this shape, it was so easy for me to draw uh, characters and which way they were facing in a super simple way. Look at this cough. All right, he's not focusing on which way the muscles turn and here and do this. He's just looking at what matters. Okay, it really depends on what type of what type of art you're trying to create. So if you're trying to be a comic book artist, maybe you actually need to know every single muscle. But even then, even then, knowing the anatomy before knowing what a good pose looks like, what a dynamic pose looks like, it doesn't matter how good your an uh, anatomy is if your poses aren't dynamic. That's, you know what, I, I think that's what the key is. It doesn't matter how good your anatomy is unless your poses are dynamic in the first place. Okay, let's look at Sean Galloway. This guy is king of simplification. And I'm not calling him a simple man. Just look at how he's, he's breaking these down into super simple shapes. Okay, steve -On. I look at steve -On's work a lot for this. Whenever I see breakdowns like this, I'm not knowing the names of whatever all this stuff is. I don't know what muscles go where or whatnot. I just know that, okay, typically what I do is I see that happening on a character and then I touch myself. <laughs> I... I, you know, reach around and I'm like, oh, okay, I see where this does this and this does that, you know. And then, well, all you gotta do is think. You just gotta use your little brain and be like, when this, when I do this, this does that. Every time. Uh, oh. Ignore that. Like I said, at the same time of you doing these uh, anatomical breakdowns, these figure studies, on the side, I'll have Steve's stuff. And I will see how he breaks them down in a simple form and see what matters, what really matters. Does this shape matter and this, like how this thing pops out this way and whoa, I could figure out all the muscles that go in here and figure out just what's going on. Too, too complicated, too complicated for my little baby brain. It's just too much, too much for me. Might be not too much for you because you might be so freaking smart, okay? I need to figure out what matters. The big picture, baby. Okay, I can see where he's putting his focus. I don't need to go any further than this than this professional artist. That's my point. Again, it, it depends on job, the, the type of job that you're trying to get into. He does storyboards and all that type of stuff, and that's what I'm into. Study the people you're trying to replicate. See where they put their focus. That's my point. All right, we're moving on to the final dingle thing here is the drawing challenge that I was gonna talk about. Okay, this is kind of what it's based on, what I wanna do. This guy, okay, when I saw this, this blew my mind. Pretty Boy James, th th this is crazy. I was so impressed by this. Uh, just the way that he did the angles and like is just drawing this character without any uh, guidelines or anything like that. This guy is crazy, look at that. I gotta say, I really didn't want to like you at first, James. I mean, you insulted me, you insulted my dog, but you know, you really surprised me here. I thought you were bad at art. I thought you were annoying. I thought you were a hack. I thought, I thought that, that you thought that you were better than me. You turned out to be a really good guy, you know? Um, you completely redeemed yourself. I don't want all of my followers and subscribers to go and don't go into his comments and, you know, trash talk him and tell him that he doesn't even know how art. Any, any, anyway, overall, really great guy. Love you, man. For the drawing challenge, just like old, old James, what James did here. Okay, so instead of always trying to draw something face on, head on, it's really cool to try to choose different angles. So that's the drawing challenge. I want you to take a reference shot of yourself or take a reference shot of a friend. Just make sure it's original. You take that shot, you do a pose, and you try to replicate it in art. You can do it digitally, you can do it traditionally. The reason that this is important to study is because if you're trying to do a character design, the angle of the camera can sometimes 
sometimes affect how you perceive that character. If they're a threat, they're gonna be hovering over the camera. If you're trying to do a character design, if you're trying to describe how they'll look in action, you're gonna want to put them in cool poses that the animators can reference down the line. So you wanna put the camera up high, put the camera down low, and while you're doing it, it's really important to reference people who've simplified it. So you can have that on the side and then do your own character design along with it. Okay, this is Chris Copeland, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. This guy is incredible. I look at his stuff all the time. Really important to look at his stuff if you're trying to do this style. Or even if you're not trying to do this style, he has a way of simplifying things. So right here, Batman, the camera's a little bit more below him, so it's kind of more mysterious, and it's just a really good shot that kind of helps describe his character. Okay, if this shot was a straight on, he would just be, you know, he would just be Batman. But now here, he's Batman, you know? Kind of like a hero pose-ish. Right, right here, you got the doc, whatever her name is. That's a really cool menacing pose. For her character, she's up off the ground typically, you know, so you want to put the, char uh, the camera below her. Okay, this can make your character look more mysterious. All right, there's a bunch of different emotions, uh, different things attached to this type of pose. <laughs> All right, so it's really important to take your own reference footage. Even if you don't take the reference footage, you can feel the way that you move in those poses and then you can kind of replicate that. So if you did this challenge, it would look something like this. You take your own reference footage, you study the pose, and then you draw your own character off to the side of it. Okay, from here you can add hair, you can do whatever. You can make it you, you can make it a character that you create. All right, after this video goes up in about a week's time, I'll be choosing three winners. Okay, here's what you do. You're gonna make something that looks like this, okay? You're gonna post it on your Instagram account. All right, and then you're gonna go to my account and you're going to see a post that's related to this video. Okay, I want you to comment on that post that you participated in the challenge. I'm gonna pick three people from that and I'm gonna talk about your work. I'm gonna talk about the post that you did and kind of break down all the things that you did right. All right, so James, I got one question for you. You ever heard of Skillshare? All right, one more thing. Obviously, I destroyed this artist's uh, whole career, their whole channel, so I'm gonna have to be given back a little bit. Uh, in one month's time from now, I'm gonna be taking all the revenue earned from this video, and it's gonna be given back to the artist that was mentioned in the video. I destroyed their self-esteem. I destroyed their self-respect, their channel, their revenue. Uh, they're gonna need all the help that they can get, all right? So, let's go. Also, if you like this content, if you like what I'm trying to do here with this channel, then please make sure you